This is Fleece King, one of the best Pokemon Go players in the world. He set multiple records, including becoming the first person to hit level 50. Is everyone ready? Let's see. First in the world! Yeah! Let's go! There it is, ladies and gentlemen! Level 50! I've also gotten the chance to peek into his account, and I've tried playing like him on a new account, which was not easy. Well, I reached out to this legendary player and asked for his top 10 tips for Pokemon Go, starting with a message by him. Hey everyone, Fleece King here. Just want to start by saying thank you to Mystic7 for another opportunity to be featured on the channel. I genuinely do appreciate it, and I hope everyone's having a great 2024 so far. So, here are my top 10 tips for Pokemon Go. Some are going to be a little bit more obvious than others, but ultimately, I hope you enjoy and you get something out of it. Let's begin. Starting with tip number one, catch everything. Catch every single Pokemon that you see when you are out on your grind. Now this might sound really obvious, but do you know how many people I see that play a spotlight hour or a community day or whatever it is, and they just shiny check Pokemon and don't actually catch anything. They click on a Pokemon, they see that it isn't shiny and then they run away. Click and run, click and run. I'm just like, you are wasting valuable resources because every Pokemon that you catch, you are getting Stardust, Candy, XP, working towards your Platinum Medals. And whether you're a day one player or a relatively newer player, I think we can all generally agree that seeing your numbers and your stats in general climb and go up and up and up is a very motivating and satisfying thing. So the only exception to why you wouldn't be catching every Pokemon that you see when you're out and about on your grind is because you live in a rural area with hardly any Pokestops or gyms, and therefore you hardly have many Pokeballs to be able to justify catching literally every Pokemon that you see, which is perfectly understandable. But other than that, you need to get into a habit of catching every Pokemon that you see, even if something can't be shiny, even if it's a boring Pokemon like a Tranquil or a Flareon or a <clears throat> sort of would have. catch everything it's a good habit to get into when you're out and about on your grind take advantage of all the resources right in front of you stop being lazy catch everything that's tip number one tip number two max out on friends if you guys didn't know you can have a maximum of 400 friends on your friends list in pokemon go and it is honestly such a great way of gaining free xp fun fact if you were to get 400 friends from zero friendship all the way to best friends that is a total of 65 million XP. And if you were to drop a lucky egg for all of that friendship, it would be a total of 130 million XP, which is absolutely insane. And also another fun little fact, if you are best friends with somebody and you delete that person and add them exactly 120 days after you deleted them, your friendship would reset back to zero and you can go through that friendship and XP cycle again. So if you don't have 400 friends in Pokemon Go for whatever reason, go join some Discord groups, go add some people all around the world, get to 400 and go through that friendship cycle. Whether you're level 40 or level 50 preparing for future levels, this is such a great, efficient, free way of gaining XP. Don't miss out on it. Tip number three, Invest into an auto catcher. Uh, I personally use the Pokemon Plus uh, Plus. There are a lot of unofficial auto catchers out there that are really good as well, but I'm telling you now, all of the top players around the world, all of the most hardcore Pokemon Go players around the world, all have some type of auto catcher. Now look, I'm sympathetic to the fact that not everybody has a spare 50, 60 dollars, whatever it is to go and buy one right away. But if you see yourself playing Pokemon Go on and off for many years to come, it is definitely worth investing into. Because again, uh, you can't possibly be on your phone all day manually catching Pokemon. It's the perfect tool for if you're driving to work, uh, maybe you're in a meeting room, maybe you're on public transport, maybe you're on the toilet, I don't know. But you can't always be on your phone on the actual app manually catching Pokemon. This is just a great way to replenish items, catch Pokemon. Do you know how many shinies I would not have on my account if it wasn't for the auto catcher? So again, put some money aside each week, but you definitely want to invest into one for the longevity of the game. Shinies, Hundos, uh, Nundos, Stardust, XP, you name it. This is just such a great tool for replenishing your collection and all its assets. So invest into an auto catcher. Tip number four. Trade more Pokemon. If you didn't know, you can do a total of 101 trades per day, including a special trade. And also a fun fact, my first ever Shundo, my first ever in Pokemon Go was from a regular special trade that didn't turn lucky, but randomly re-rolled to a Shundo. I'm not even joking. Shundo for Alligator. We just finished for Alligator Community Day, did a random special trade trying to get it lucky, didn't turn lucky, was about to delete it, appraised it, Shundo! So what I'm saying is, 
Trading is the perfect tool if you're able to and have friends in your community, obviously. I sympathize with people that don't, but if you're able to trade Pokemon, it is such a great tool for candy, XL candy, re-rolling to get better IVs. And if you do get a lucky Pokemon from a trade, there is a one in 64 chance that that lucky Pokemon is a hundo. And generally speaking, when Pokemon are lucky, they're gonna have better IVs. Uh, you need it for your lucky decks, and it's obviously half Stardust to power up lucky Pokemon as well. So whether you're trying to save Stardust on powering up Pokemon, so it's a little bit cheaper for you, whether you're trying to complete your lucky decks and get every single Pokemon in Pokemon Go registered as lucky in the Pokedex, or whether you're just trying to get Shundos, Hundos, you name it, this is the best tool. So make sure that you're trading as much as you possibly can if you have friends in your community to do so. Tip number five, better manage your Pokemon tags. Tagging Pokemon and creating organized folders has become the most efficient way of making sure your collection in Pokemon Go is properly organized and things are where they need to be. Whether it's Pokemon that you want to power up later on, level 50 Pokemon, or just saving Pokemon for trades and having them in an organized folder, just like cleaning up and tidying your room, makes your Pokemon collection feel more tidied and cleaned up. For example, I have a folder, I have a tag called Mum. Shout out to Mum. Every time we do a trade session, and I search what Pokemon I want to trade her, I literally just type in mum and all of the Pokemon that I have are saved and ready to be there for her. And why this is so helpful is number one, I know what Pokemon I want to trade for her, but number two, when I'm out and about on my grind, rather than favoriting every single Pokemon I want to save and renaming them, I don't have to favorite them and I don't have to rename them. All I have to do is tag that Pokemon and put it into the mum folder. And it just makes it so easy because I'm sure like me, a lot of you guys have probably accidentally transferred stuff that you've wanted to save for trade. And just the hassle of when you are trading with someone of favoriting and unfavoriting something and typing a word in, it's just, it's just a mess. So again, get into a habit of creating folders and just mass picking all of these things. You don't have to constantly favorite and unfavorite when you're doing trades and constantly renaming stuff. It's just so much easier and more efficient to just put them into a folder. Tip number six. Set yourself more in-game goals. The reason why it's so important to set yourself personalized goals that you can actively work toward, whether they're daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly goals, is because, well, first of all, if we're being honest, some of the events that come out in Pokemon Go can be incredibly lackluster. Maybe the spawns aren't that fun, maybe it feels very repetitive to you, and furthermore, maybe you go out and grind and you don't get a shiny, you don't get a hundo, it happens all the time. And it's very easy to get caught up in that and feel really discouraged. But if you set yourself personalized goals that are within your control, it makes the game feel much more rewarding and much more motivating for the longevity. We cannot control the decisions that Niantic make. We cannot control the, sp the spawns that are around. And we unfortunately can't control the luck that's involved with finding a shiny or finding a hundo, but you can control the goals that you set for yourself. So for example, if your goal is to catch 100 Pokemon a day, you can do that, that is within your own ability. Now you can't control whether or not you get a shiny in that or a hundo or whatever it may be, but setting yourself goals and then achieving them, there's something gratifying in that and it is something that is within your control. Um, so one of the things that I would definitely recommend, and I've been doing this for many, many years, is every time before I go out and grind, I take a screenshot of my profile, my kilometers walked, my Pokemon caught, my Pokestop spun, my total XP, and then when I get back after my grind, I compare the numbers and see how many Pokemon I caught, how much XP I gained, and it's just a fun little way of accountability. And again, I think what's good about having your own personal, and it's got nothing to do with anybody else, it's your own goals. So if somebody's catching 2000 Pokemon a day, that shouldn't be the benchmark. Everybody lives in a different part of the world, has different types of availability. So set yourself a goal that is healthy and sustainable for you. And it's gonna feel a lot more enjoyable going through the cycle of the game, having little goals to achieve every day, whether it's 50 Pokemon, whether it's trading 50 Pokemon, whatever it may be, it's only up to you and you only to set those goals for yourself and make sure that they're enjoyable and sustainable and it keeps the game fun and exciting. And again, it just means that you might not get a shiny, you might not get a hundo, the event itself might be boring, but you can still achieve those goals no matter the circumstances in the game. Tip number seven, delete more shiny and hundo Pokemon. 
Now I know I've probably triggered some people already just by saying that, but hear me out. Listen, in an ideal world, I would honestly keep every single shiny and every single hundo. On top of that, there are so many Pokemon that I've caught over the years that have been associated with a fun time of my life, a place that I've traveled to with nostalgia. But you realize after playing this game for many, many years, you can't possibly keep every single Pokemon you've ever wanted to keep because your storage would just constantly be full and you have to compromise and delete stuff. Just like with real life, you know? In an ideal world, I would keep every single toy that I ever had as a kid because it's nostalgic and associated with my childhood. But as you get older, you realize again, similar to the Pokemon collection, you have to chuck stuff out, you have to delete stuff, and it's just a part of life. So if you want to be able to enjoy the game for the longevity, maybe you're not at the point yet where you need to delete Shinies and Hundos because you're relatively new to the game and you keep your collection under control. But for so many of us who have been playing for many, many years, we just put off, you know, we procrastinate deleting stuff, but ultimately, may this be a reminder and a conviction for you. Maybe it's time to start going through your collection and just go through and, do, and ask yourself when you're looking at your collection, do I need 20 shiny Piplups from Community Day? Probably not. Again, in an ideal world, we keep everything, we never chuck anything out, but it's just if we want to have fun and we want to play the game at a sustainable pace, uh, you've got to make those decisions. It's painful at first, but just like chucking stuff out is painful at first, it is a necessary process and it will make you feel better mentally for doing it. So again, may this be a reminder, go through your collection, send some Pokemon to Pokemon Home, put some stuff in a trade folder to trade to somebody else long term. I understand people save stuff for like double candy events, which is fa fantastic, but again, be more willing to delete shiny and hundo Pokemon because for the longevity of the game, if you want to enjoy playing at a sustainable pace unfortunately some pokemon got to go to the bin tip number eight stop comparing yourself to other players now the reason why i mention that is because i think this is a very healthy perspective to kind of put out there is i see way too often people say fleece i'm only level 28 I'm only level 34. I only have 5,000 couches. You need to remove the word only from your vocabulary when you're talking about yourself and your account. And when you keep comparing yourself to other people and other people's accounts as a means to discourage and to devalue your account and your own accomplishments, that's just a terrible thing to do. Listen, for some more perspective, some people have been playing from the very beginning that Pokemon Go came out, and some people have only been playing for 12 months. Some people live in a huge city with lots of Pokestops, lots of spawns, lots of gyms, and some people live in a rural community with hardly any Pokestops or gyms at all. Some people spend a ridiculous amount of money on the game over many years, and some people don't spend any money at all. And that's totally and utterly okay, whichever one that you are. But what I'm trying to say is, Comparing yourself to somebody with a completely different set of circumstances is not fair on yourself. Just like when you go to the gym and you've only been working out for a couple of months and you look at somebody else's physique who's been working out for five plus years, that is not a fair or healthy comparison on yourself. So in the same way with Pokemon Go, try to stop comparing your account to somebody else's account when it makes you feel discouraged and devalued. You are doing the best possible job with your account and with your collection given your circumstances and given when you started. A lot of people quit and came back and it isn't fair to compare yourself to people who have been playing from day one consistently all the way through. So this tip is more of just a healthy refreshing perspective to make sure that when you're comparing yourself to others it's only as a means of accountability and healthy inspiration and not to devalue and to make you feel discouraged. Remember we all started at different times, we all play at different paces, we all have different living circumstances and play the game differently. So make sure that you try not to compare yourself to other players. Enjoy the game at your own pace at the best possible way that you can. Tip number nine, join more online Pokemon Go communities. I talked about before adding more people to your friends list for XP and an extension of that would be getting gifts from around the world for scatterbug encounters, getting more remote raid invitations and being able to invite people to your raids and most of that stems from your ability to connect and join more online communities for Pokemon Go. And while Niantic is damaging and hurting the online Pokemon Go community at the moment by nerfing remote raids, making in prices ridiculously expensive and making things more difficult for people rather than easier and more accessible, it's up to us as a community to stay connected 
when sometimes things feel very disconnected. And honestly, some of the friends and best memories that I've had in this game have been from people that I've met online, people that I've chatted to online, communities that have been established from the online and global community. So it's a new year. Why not join new groups, make new friends? You know, just on Facebook alone, there are so many countless Pokemon Go groups that have hundreds and thousands of members and hundreds and thousands of active users. So join some Facebook groups. If I was to go on Facebook right now and type Pokemon Go Sydney, there's a bunch of Pokemon Go groups in Sydney. So wherever you're from in the world, type Pokemon Go wherever, join those communities. If there's none where you live in the world, join some global groups, you know, have a rant. Uh, celebrate the good times, have a rant about the bad times, but ultimately that sense of community is so important for everybody to feel. And while Niantic uh, refuses to acknowledge this, the fundamental truth is not everyone has an in-person community to play with and to be a part of. So it's up to us again to stay connected and to join as many online global communities as we can. Mystic7 has a Discord group, go ahead and join it. Be involved, do some research, but ultimately having that sense of community wherever we live in the world and whatever our personal circumstances are is so important. So add people, get involved, make some friends and just do some research because it's worth doing because it's a little bit biased, but I want to say that the Pokemon Go online and global community is one of the best gaming communities in the world, in my opinion. And finally, tip number 10, which I honestly think is the most important above all, don't burn out and have fun. Everything that I've mentioned from adding more people, getting more involved with online communities, setting yourself personal goals, being more efficient with your catching when you're out in your grind, all of that doesn't matter if you're not actually having fun and enjoying the game. And I'm preaching this to myself, by the way, but sometimes we forget that Pokemon Go is a game that is meant to be enjoyed. And sometimes if we're not careful, it becomes a list of obligations, a checklist of things that we for some reason think that we need to do, that we need to play every day, that we need to get our streaks every day, that we need to open gifts, send gifts, do the buddy swaps, the buddy rotations, get our 50 coins from a gym every day, do PVP every day, do trades every day, and it gets to a point where it's like, ah! You know, so you gotta be careful and make sure that you're enjoying the game at a pace that is fun and sustainable for you. And it's very liberating, again, I'm preaching to myself, even though this is my job, that it's okay to not play every day. It's okay to not be hardcore every day. It's okay to not have to get a shiny every single day. It's okay, you know, so make sure when you're reevaluating your gameplay and reevaluating your Pokemon Go journey in general, make sure are you enjoying it? Is it fun? If you feel that you're burning out a little bit, take a step back. If you don't want to send gifts every day, you don't have to. You don't have to get your coins every day. You don't have to catch a Pokemon every day. And coming to that realization is honestly very liberating. So make sure that you're having fun, that you're enjoying the process and only you know what that looks like and what's sustainable for you as a person. So just want to say again, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've gotten something out of these points. Some of them are, you know, more skewed towards in-game stuff and more. some of them are more like perspective, you know, but ultimately I hope uh, it's been enjoyable and encouraging and you've gotten something out of it. Just want to say a big thank you again to Mystic7 for uh, another opportunity on the channel. Really means a lot. I will see you in LA next month. Thank you so much, everybody. Wishing you and your family a wonderful 2024 ahead. And I genuinely, and I pray and I hope that this is a much better year for Pokemon Go with exciting raid bosses, less restrictions, more exciting features, and that for old and new plays for all of us to come together and enjoy. So take care, have fun, God bless, see you later.